Hi, Uncle Barry here, and today we take a deep dive into the depths of DHCP. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which is used to dynamically assign IP addresses to client computers. This video is going to be in three parts. First, I go over all the basic concepts of DHCP. Second, I do a live demonstration setting up a simple DHCP server. And finally, we go down to the packet level of DHCP in Wireshark in another live demonstration. And if you understand the protocol down to a packet level, then you really understand that protocol. So, let's start by remembering that each device or host on a TCP IP network will cry, requires a unique IP address. Recall that IP addresses are 32 bits long and generally represented in dotted decimal notation in four octets such as 192.168.1.27. There are two possible ways that a host can obtain its unique IP address. Either it's assigned statically, that is manually, by an admin, or dynamically, that is automatically, by DHCP. In the old days, you had to statically assign an IP address to each and every device in the network. This required a great deal of time and effort and was subject to errors such as accidentally assigning two hosts to the same IP address. So nowadays, DHCP is almost always used. In fact, DHCP is so common that it is built in on most SOHO wireless routers. DHCP is a server service, that is, a service that, we, that will be performed by a server. Thus, it resides on layer 7 of the OSI reference model, which is called the application layer. Now, for you newbies, remember that DNS is a separate service from DHCP, even though they can sometimes talk to each other. Now, when we say that DHCP provides IP addresses to hosts, it actually provides four different parameters to the host. These are the IP address itself, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and also primary and possibly secondary DNS servers. There are three other terms used in DHCP that we need to understand. These are scope, leases, and reservations. Now, the scope is the IP addresses that are assigned dynamically that are pulled from the scope of the server. The scope is the range of IP addresses that the DHCP server is allowed to give out. Next, we come to leases. Now, leases assign the IP address to the client for a specific amount of time configurable by the admin. This helps make sure that you don't run out of IP addresses, ensuring a host doesn't hold on to an IP address indefinitely, even after that host is not on the network anymore. Now, a client generally tries to renew its lease at 50% of the lease time. And when the lease is renewed, it will generally keep the same IP address. And uh, the last term we need to go over is reservations. Now, they can be assigned to specific servers within the scope and will never be given out to other computers. So you can reserve IP addresses for specific servers on your network. This allows the server to maintain the same IP address indefinitely, which is generally desirable. Now for a host to obtain an IP address, there must be four packets exchanged between the host and the DHCP server. These packets are the DHCP discover packet, the DHCP offer packet, the DHCP request packet, and the DHCP act packet. And now we go over the four DHCP packets in detail. Uh, the first packet would be sent by a client that would be looking to get an IP address. So it's always starting from the client, uh, which makes complete sense. So um, you notice that the source 
IP address is 0.0.0.0. So why is it 0.0.0.0? Well, the uh, client doesn't have an IP address at this point yet, so it has to use that. Also notice the destination is 255.255.255.255. And why is that? Well, that's the broadcast address. Now, here we see that the client does not know the, uh, where, the, where to find the server. That's why it sends that broadcast out. Now, the other thing to notice is the ports. The client port 68 to server port 67. Now, if you notice anything unusual about that, you're right, because the server port is a well-known port, 67, but the client port in general would be an ephemeral port, which would be a high number like 42057 or something like that. But we see that there's kind of like a well-known port on each end in the DHCP discover. Next, we come to the DHCP offer, and that is going, that's the server answering back to the client. So here you can see that it, um, that the ports are reversed, so it's server port 67 to client port 68. And once again, those ports are a little bit unusual, like I just explained. Um, and here, th this is where the server actually offers an IP address to the client and said, hey, here's an IP address that you can use. Now, you notice the source is 192.168.0.1. That happens to be the IP address of the actual DHCP server, which in my case is just a little um, wireless router. Uh, also, we notice that the destination is the broadcast again. So the um, being that the client does not have an IP address yet, the only way that the server can uh, talk to the client would be to broadcast to everybody. Uh, so it, now the, the next packet is the DHCP request, which is coming from the client back to the server. And basically in the DHCP request, the client is saying, yes, I will take that IP address. Now, why is that even necessary? Well, what if there was two or three different um, servers on the network, DHCP servers on the network, for redundancy, in which if, if that was the case, then both of them might have offered an IP address to the, uh, to the client. But the, so the client has to choose one of them. But in this case, it's just one DHCP server, and it still operates that way. So we notice that the, uh, that the source is still 0.0.0.0.0 0, uh, 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 from the client, which makes sense because it still doesn't have an IP address. And it also broadcasts out again to get to the, uh, to get to the uh, servant there, to the server there. And finally, you have the DHCP ACK, and that is the server telling the client, yes, okay, you can, have that, uh, you can have that IP address, and then it gives it a lease and all that. Uh, once again, we see that the, uh, the ports, server port 67 to client port 68. Again, note that's a little unusual, but you can see it's the reverse of the above. And once again, the source is 192.168.0.1 because that is the IP address of the... Uh, of the uh, of the server, and the uh, destination is still the broadcast. You'd think that the uh, that the that the server might know the IP address of the client, but it doesn't yet, so it still has to broadcast it. And that's the end of part one of this video. In part two, we look in great detail at these same four DHCP uh, packets in Wireshark. I hope to see you then. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave a uh, comment. I'd be happy to answer. This has been Huckleberry. Thank you very much.